Today, you're gonna get a tour of the container home that I've been building the past few months. Well, technically a year and a half, but then COVID permits and stuff hit. But that's besides the point. Because when I drew this all up, I budgeted for this project to cost me only around $75,000, $100,000 tops. I'm about maybe 70% finished and I'm just shy of $150,000 <gasps> into this thing. Stay to the end where I show you why this is not going to be your normal container home, if that's such a thing, and what kind of income I think I can get from it and why I'm still okay completing it despite being ridiculously over budget. Let's get into it. Now I've got a free live webinar for all of you interested in land hacking. If you want to understand more of my blueprint and get to ask me your questions, I strongly encourage you to go to my website, kaiandrew.com and reserve yourself a seat. Like I said, it's free and I'll be hosting it live myself. But at the time of this recording, there's still seats open and available. It is limited seating because like I said, it's live. Hope to see you there. Now, if this is not your cup of tea or no hard feelings, you can grab my free guides on my golden triangle method when it comes to finding the right areas to invest in, my spreadsheets to show you how I run my numbers and even my list of profitable structures and my new freshly updated sheet of how to finance or what kind of financing to get. One big area that I see as a missed opportunity for a lot of places is how they incorporate the exterior into the space. I'd even say it's a critical component in today's hot market. So you can see here that I already have a lot of bamboo growing and more to come because I want to create a thick bamboo oasis feel around this whole space. And you'll see more of what I mean when we get inside. This isn't just any bamboo either. All the bamboo that you see on the property are timber bamboo, meaning they'll grow 40, 50 plus feet high with three, five, inch diameters, big old thick boys. Out here in the country, not only do we have a killer view, but we also have a great night sky since we are further away from the city lights. So I'm going to take advantage of that in a couple of key ways. One will be an outdoor soaking tub and something that's going to be put right here that allow you to soak in the sunset and stars while encircled by bamboo. Now, I don't want to share it with you just yet because I want you to see it when it's all done. My students do get to know more about my design strategies, so if you're dying to know, become one of my students. Now, when it comes to spaces like this, privacy is huge. Nobody wants neighbors or to be around a lot of strangers, especially if they're booking a place at this price point and in this location. That's why I'll be putting in this private driveway so they don't have to share it with the one in the main house. It'll add to the experience and create a more secluded feeling when they pull up to the house. I'm even contemplating painting a really cool mural on this wall to welcome you as you pull up. Haven't decided on it quite yet though. Now with the exterior of the containers themselves, I wanted to show off the uniqueness of the containers, but I also wanted to add some more modern and traditional elements like a metal roof and clear cedar tongue and groove for the soffit. Oof. That was expensive at the height of the lumber prices. All of that in the wood you're going to see in the bit really screwed me over on the budget. But I will be tying everything together by painting the body white and all the trim and windows will be black. I like the heavy contrast and I think it'll suit this design style really, really well. Now the roof was where a lot of the engineering expense came into play. Aside from the giant steel beams we installed up top, all the trusses and lumber was purchased again at peak pricing and metal roofing is a very expensive of option. But I think it looks super clean and is the only way to do container homes. I have yet to see another option yet that looks as good as metal roofing on container. For the building science of container, I also completely insulated the top of the containers with closed cell spray foam. This will stop condensation from forming on the inside and makes the space very comfortable in the summer and the winter. Now, when it comes to the openings, things get tricky. This is where inspections, engineering, and a really good welder came into play. Each time you put a hole in the skin of a container, you can have a dramatic impact on the structure and rigidity of the entire container itself. Therefore, everything is over-engineered and we had to put in these super beefy tube steel. We added these flat stock steel for additional waterproofing and aesthetics, but this is where a lot of the work came into play. But as you can see, I think it looks pretty dang sweet and it's gonna add to the overall design of the building. Okay, let's open these things up and take a look inside. So as you can see, things are still a bit of a mess. We moved a lot of the scrap and wood inside when we got hit with a rainstorm a few weeks ago and just haven't gotten around to cleaning it up. This is more of the storage side of the container, but who cares, it's a construction site. So this side here will be an office and a cat condo for my girlfriend, Sarah. These two containers will also be a mini shop for me and my tool that way I get my entire garage back and I can fit two vehicles 
back inside the main garage. Now, as we walk through this wall here, we are actually entering the bathroom. And here you can start to see where a lot of my money went to buying the crazy priced lumber. I bought it all at different times, but I paid between eight to $14 per two by four. For any of you in construction, you know that that is absolutely insane. Normal prices of two by four studs is like 250 to three bucks a piece. Anyways, here is all 600 square feet of the place. This here is a very large bedroom with the future work desk in front of the large picture frame window. And as you can see, I wanted you to wake up and feel like you were in a bamboo forest. I don't want you to even feel like you're in the States. And when the sun hits it in the morning, it just feels beautiful here. This here will be an oversized closet and obviously the bathroom just on the other side. Over there is the coat and cleaning closet. Now, as we step out here, you see the main entry door, which we saw earlier, and it opens right up into all of this, windows and views. Now, you know I don't like just views in my space. I have a couple tricks up my sleeve to make this place very different. Perhaps some 3D walls, a rock climbing wall. Again, I wanna save all of those for you when it's all done and installed so you can see it all nice, clean, and perfect. Now remember, when I build from scratch like this or even remodels, I focus around a term. I'm not sure if I made it up or not, but I call it Instagrammability. Every single room in this space will fall into that bucket. What pays these days is being different, not better. Better is too easy to achieve. Different is much more difficult and requires something a lot of people drowned out of their lives a long time ago, creativity. The overall plan, be different. So let's address the elephant in the room. I'm basically already at double my budget. Why am I still doing this? And how am I still optimistic about all this? Easy. I've been preaching this on my channel and to my students, never run out of cash. Make sure you run your conservative numbers and even in your worst case scenarios that you cannot predict the model still works and you make money. Running out of cash is the silver bullet to any business. It will kill the business instantly. Running optimistic numbers and planning around them is the stake through the heart. I actually had nearly four times the cash available just for this project in case things went wrong. For one, I knew we were in a funky time with everything going on in the economy and I saw the writing on the wall with pricing, but I also knew how much equity putting up a permanent structure like this would add to my property, which is around $300,000. And that doesn't take into account the future value of the cash flows from it. And taking a look at my numbers real quick, which you can download a spreadsheet to help you do the same on my website, gross profits will be in the $50,000 range each year off this one door. That more than justifies the extra $75,000 cost to build this. At the end of the day, it does all come down to the numbers and I knew this site would make sense to me even if it took me up to $300,000 to build out. Even though I don't want that, the numbers do support that scenario. By now you're probably wondering, what the heck was that counter that kept popping up on the screen throughout the video? Well, those are unique points. Most spaces and listings that are listed on any type of platform have maybe one or two points. The decent ones have three, maybe four. Just from this quick tour and what we counted out, there's up to eight. But when we're finished, there will be well over a dozen unique aspects to this property. And why does that matter, Kai? Three words. Barriers of entry. We know that unique and different stays pull in customers and guests. Okay, that makes sense. But it does something else for us. And only you who stuck to the end of this video know this now. Barriers of entry makes others have to compete with you instead of you having to compete with them. It's both strategic on the customer side as well on the business side. Listen to what I'm saying here. Being different is no longer a choice. It is critical if you want to succeed in the long run, attract guests, and limit your competition. Why do you think Airbnb rates inside major cities are averaging like 80 bucks a room? Anybody with a pulse can buy and get a place and put it on the platform. It's more likely someone can get a ranch style home in a 1970s suburb than for them to find seven acres with a sunset view and construct a container home. Being different has to be part of your business plan. I would actually say it should be the core of your business plan. And that kind of stuff is exactly what I'll be teaching in my free live webinar later this month. So go get a seat before things fill up. And again, if you're super serious, go join my wait list for the Live Land Hacker program that I'm teaching in August. If both of those aren't of any interest, at least go get some free guides. If you made it this far into the video, you have to be somewhat interested, right?
kaiandrew.com. Go do your thing. I love you all. Until next time, thanks for joining me. Kai out.